Hey guys, it's SJ and this is going to be a video all about disciplining our tweens and I mean discipline in like a teaching, connecting, not correcting type of way. Um, kind of continuing on from all my gentle parenting videos that I've done for the past few years but going up to tweens because I've just completed that stage. <laughs> yeah, I just realised, like, oh my god, Freddie is like 12 and a half um, and Finn has just turned nine so I'm literally in the tweens which is kind of like young pre-teens some people call it or um, sort of when they're sort of older than little kind of babies anymore not so much infants um, but they're not yet teens it's a kind of forgotten age or stage and there's so much that happens so this is a whole series do hit subscribe i would love you to be here for the whole series it's just free videos here on youtube um, but i put loads of research and thought into it so you'll get loads out of it i hope first one is going to be all about friendships because I think that this is the stage when that all really changes. They start to make their own friendships. That whole social world that's like a little bit scary opens up and it all plays into their self-esteem and their overall feelings about school and really trickles across the whole rest of everything, doesn't it? And their whole life, you know, their whole life is going to be about how they learn to make decent choices in their relationships deep <laughs> um, but that's what this is going to be about we also am really thrilled that I have a free gift for you all it's really exciting it's my favorite and the first thousand people to use the link below will get a whole month free trial of Skillshare so Skillshare if you don't know what it is is an online learning community so this video is a bit like this one but it's like a mini course and they're all about unlocking your creativity and about you really fulfilling all the sort of passions that you have as well because I think as our kids get to tweens number one it's nice for them to see us having a passion and an interest because I'm like oh I always make that joke about you know when the kids say they're bored and I'm like why have you come to me for a good idea like I'm literally doing the dishwasher <laughs> I want them to see me having a fulfilled positive social life with lots of activities and hobbies as well because that will hopefully inspire them but it's great for if you're an entrepreneur or you want to do a side hustle because you can get so many tips and tools of how to do that. So I've done a whole bunch. I loved the Jonathan Von Ness one. I loved um, one all about how to unlock your creative power, uh, which was so brilliant. He talked about finding your passion by being like a six-year-old tattoo. So what tattoo would you have had when you were six? Like our little tweens that we're still interested in right now. And that may be something we're really passionate about. Go back to it, whether that's just like reading. Um, and the one I just did is Finding Fulfillment Using Pivots to Power Your Creative Career by Emma Gannon. And it's all about that side hustle and following what you're interested in and how you can figure that out, what it is that's really going to fulfill you. All the courses are only like an hour to two hours long, so I literally have it on while I'm cooking dinner or I do it in the evening instead of sort of watching telly. I feel like I'm actually learning and then part of this community and I can really use those valuable tools. So I loved the career pivot one because I had to write down uh, little tasks and you had to write down three things that were important to you that you're not getting out of your job now. <laughs> and one was so short, I was like, oh my gosh, this job is one of the most anti-social jobs in the world because I'm literally alone right now chatting to you but I'm all by myself um, and I was like I want some more social fulfillment, I want to spend more time outdoors because this isn't a very outdoorsy um, thing to be doing and now all the kids are in school, I think don't know if you feel like that, if your kids turned into tweens, turned, <laughs> uh, they've grown into lovely tweens, it's difficult to get outside as much like I used to when I was just like frolicking in the woods with my babies <laughs> in my very center glasses um, and that was really important to me and then um, having more adventures doing stuff that's more out of my comfort zone so now I've sort of signed up for other ideas like oh my gosh I could turn this thing into a job um, that gets me all those things so it's just really good timing in our lives as mothers to learn some new skills and that's what you can get from Skillshare so I will leave the link below I really genuinely love Skillshare I would love to know what courses you took it's a whole month free so do take it up and spend this autumn just enjoying yourself paint take photos just get really creative and unleash that side of yourself so I'm going to chat about the tweens from my personal experience because I'm a mum obviously but also I have sort of read a lot up and the first thing that struck me around the tween stage was their social sphere really really changed so it was small things like they didn't want to have a big party anymore with all their friends or actually started to drift away from the friends they had um, and pick new ones which is totally normal obviously when they're little a lot of their friendships are made with us like we're the ones sort of arranging the play dates or we pick the friends from who, if, the, if we like the mum <laughs> let's be honest uh, we like, like this is your best friend Evie and they're like who? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I like her mum. Um, so that kind of changes as they get to tweens. And that's a really lovely thing, but can be quite 
challenging to help them to navigate or you can feel like their world's going quite small as they step back and step away from these bigger social events and reading the psychology of kind of that age group and what's going on mentally in their minds is when they really start to understand social uh, their place within the social world so they start to have a feeling even if they're like academic um, levels. So like this person's really smart, this person maybe struggles, maybe I struggle more than them, rather than feeling like they were just all learning as a class. Um, and that really puts a lot of bit of anxiety on their heads as well. Um, and then they just start to feel much more social pressure to fit in. And that's really important part of this age group. They really do want to fit in. So for parents, it's things like if everyone's watching a certain TV show, consider could they have it like we had this with Fortnite obviously everyone was playing Fortnite at the time and I just didn't want Freddie to have it and in the end I was like okay fine I realized that literally it was every single boy we had over was like yeah I play I play we all play tonight we're playing and we chat so I was like okay fine you can have it um and that was became like a thing so letting them join in and giving them the tools within your own boundaries like he doesn't have social media or anything like that even now at 12 um but letting them join in and figuring out what's healthy for them and what your own boundaries are like i would say as a side whatsapp um not until secondary because we've only just got whatsapp and it is stressful <laughs> i think the year six whatsapp goes wrong in every single school i've ever spoken to anyone about so while they're sort of going into this thing, I really like the thing I read, they call it the group membership, and they're really trying to get group membership, which is to be part of that bigger collective now, and they feel like they're a little bit more working for that. You might see that they pick a friend that you don't really particularly like, and you're like, oh, I don't get that friend for you. It doesn't really bring out your best, or maybe you're a little bit trying too hard to be their friend. And similarly, they might ditch a friend that you really liked, that you've really, you know, yourself bonded with and find really easy to have around. But you've really got to, what I read about this is just to trust them and trust that they'll be making decisions on what makes them the most happy and the most comfortable. So if they're cutting out a friend that you think is lovely, maybe that relationship's just changed for them now they've drifted apart maybe the language they use is different maybe they're just getting into different hobbies now they're getting to this age and really let them really trust them and don't try and force a friendship and I think that that was really interesting to think about it in that way we don't always know what's going on um at this age even even though they're still like you know very little um letting them kind of go that for some reason that relationship doesn't feel good to me anymore is really really good and similarly if they're sort of chasing a friendship that maybe is a bit more like toxic and you're kind of like oh gosh I really wish you would give that let that one go and we were seeing them changing parts of their personality or trying out even different roles like I'll be funny one day or this day I'll be like sarcastic or this day I'll be a bit like um sweary even you know when they get a bit older it's kind of difficult again to watch them try all these different hats on and they're just trying to figure it out so what we can do is just let them know that we love all parts of them don't point it out like, that's not you that's not who you are obviously language and stuff is really important to keep a boundary on but while they're exploring like i remember like my mum was just always really kind to me and i used to try and put makeup on and i <laughs> used to have it like all around my face couldn't do it and there was just this we don't say anything to sarah jane she's just figuring some stuff out right now yeah she's plucked all her eyebrows off and she's smeared like lipstick on her cheeks we just won't say anything <laughs> <laughs> let's just let her do her um and it is a bit like that let them do them but knowing that they've got that loving support so it's knowing when to say something and when not to at this age as much and as much as possible just letting them know they are loved accepted totally for who they are um and all aspects of them the second thing was really around clubs hobbies activities i found that the boys just suddenly didn't want to do anything <laughs> um i don't know if that's a boy thing i think it is more and then i found that really difficult because I want to go out and do stuff and I'm like their main caregiver so it's like they don't want to go to the park anymore after school they just want to come home or I used to do like so many activities and they would just be like yeah jump in the car good to go whatever um, and now they've got their own ideas shock horror we've raised them to have their own ideas we've raised them to know that their opinions matter and count so what we do now is I can't schedule for them it'll be like what do you want to do so I do say you have to do one club one school club because they've got lovely clubs at their school and i really like them to spend that time and i think make those friendships outside of the classroom but in a place where um they're really really safe and the clubs are so nice so i really want them to do one school club each um and then they've picked those but then i think solo um clubs are really nice at this age that sounds really weird a solo club club of one <laughs> um so i mean something they can do one-on-one -on -one. so whether that's tennis 
for example. So sometimes what I realised my kids were not enjoying was a competitive activity after school that's this whole new social anxiety sort of creeping in even if it's low level that sort of ability to put yourself out there takes quite a lot and actually them having a activity that they can do just by themselves so Finn started drum lessons and I was like this is going to be perfect because he's really noisy he loves banging he loves making noise um and yeah get some anger out as well so he started drumming and it's really been good and he really likes it because the drum teacher comes here to the house so it's things like that and at freddie at his age did singing lessons <laughs> he'll be mortified I said that. but that's what he did um, and the singing teacher came to our house so he did it at home he really really liked it we'd signed up for guitar but we could only get a singing teacher and then he was great at singing actually so yeah maybe i've got a little uh, boy band on my hands but yeah figuring out you know if they got a social club have they got an activity they can do by themselves and just take their time to learn it and kind of do it maybe in the safety of the home if we're struggling to get them out and about and then think about stuff you can do together now because we've changed our routine around they like to come straight home chill have their time we can have dinner at around five a bit early and go back out i was like we can go back out guys we're not all going to be in bed like evelyn is old enough now that the baby's not needing to go to bed at six i said this is life-changing so we sometimes go swimming at like half six there's all these people their age there <laughs> i'm like oh i didn't i thought i was the only one who i think i just sort of step kept in a child baby routine for so long and actually realizing going back out at the end of the day taking them down to play football that's when they get their energy is after dinner again and they want to come back and socialize again and they've got the um they've had their recharge so just have a look at your routine and go am i serving my tween have i changed things up enough for them and if like me you've got one that's older and then the little one because i do have like the 12 year old and then a five year old and it's like how am i going to have a weekly routine um, or a bedtime routine i am going to do bedtime routines in this series so hit the subscribe button it's down there it's really important not to embarrass them when they've got their mates over. <laughs> um, I say that like wholeheartedly because I was like, I had to really learn it because when they were little, I could like get involved and I could like say like, let's do this, let's do that. Or I could say, put your phone down, you're not being very kind to your friend and things. And then I had to really realise, oh my God, I've got to really quieten that down because it's mortifying like Henrik did it the other day came down and was like Freddie do you need a wee don't wet yourself and I was like you can't say yell that when he's playing football with his mates he was clearly holding that wee <laughs> I was like that's mortifying that's embarrassing and Henrik was like oh my god I didn't even think so just being very like quiet and if you hear stuff that goes on in the house having played it is great I've just got an open door policy Freddie can bring friends around whenever he wants Obviously, the little two, um, obviously with Finn, I still have to arrange them a little bit. Um, but overhearing how they are with their friends is really <laughs> insightful. And then hearing how their friends speak to them. And it gives you that really good chance to have a chat. Like, sometimes there's people are saying things or they use a bit of name calling or in a light-hearted way um, or sometimes it's just like not being particularly kind to each other and it gives you that chance to have those conversations so we had a thing yeah, recently where Freddie had a friend over and Henrik actually overheard his friend was saying something that we really would not say um, in our house so we were just like don't go in don't make a fuss don't like say anything when his friend went home Henrik was like look we you know why we don't talk like that in our house? And he's like, yeah, I get it. It's like, you know, do you talk like that sometimes when you're out of the house? You know, is it sort of, you know, it's different when people are saying it. And he was like, no, obviously, probably yes. So we just reiterated again at why we don't talk like that. And um, it just gives you the chance to have conversations and let them know that they've got their own lane and that their friends have got their lane and that's them and that's absolutely fine. But they also are can be strong and, and stick with their own beliefs and their own standards. Um, and sort of having that conversation with them about not trying to become their friends, be their own selves, is a really nice thing to do after a play date. And another great one, which is my last one, is tween movies. Finally, I mean, Bluey is lush, don't get me wrong, but I was so thrilled when I could start to watch tween movies with Freddie. So we watched all sorts of things. They're quite feminine, which is, um, difficult so let me know if you've seen any good boy ones there's one really good one called middle school on netflix i'll link it below and it's all about a boy who has to follow all the school rules so he decides to break every single rule and there's so many great topics in it like loyalty siblings um rules and following rules in school and the different sort of groups at school and being yourself when you're different at school that's always the topic isn't it um so it was just gave us so much to chat about and we watched that movie so many times it makes me cry that movie and we watched Mean Girls, we watched Kissing Booth, like, and you can just have so many chats around the 
around the movie and it's such a great tool so if you haven't quite done it yet just think yeah like a Sunday afternoon it was great one-on-one -on -one time as well with your tween um, and then it gives you that sort of conversation starter as well and it gets you into their world a little bit and um, they can tell you a bit more when you're watching a movie so those are my friendship chat um, advice and how to kind of keep connecting and to support them and just sort of what's going on behind the scenes a little bit from all my reading as I said next I'm going to chat about school and can gender parenting ever work with school and how to help your tween stay motivated during school and I'm also doing one about emotions and feelings so yeah I would love for you to be part of the series as I said it's just very chatty um I can't be like this is 10 ways to help your tween because they're so you know it's everyone's so different everyone's got such different lives and different ways of being but I just wanted to give you as much info as I have um, and just to get to know some more tween mums would be great so I'll see you on my next video please do make the most of that Skillshare offer I'm so thrilled it is a whole month free of Skillshare there are literally thousands and thousands of courses you can learn everything from your passions like photography drawing illustrating um, plant care and just how to make your home really work for well-being I'm going to do that as well so so much on there that you'll get so much out of um, during the next month and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys!